Welcome to ASEAN Beast, your only choice for business updates covering ASEAN countries. I'm Andrew Chia. And I'm Eric Chong. And together we bring you business news on everything that happens around the world that affects ASEAN countries. Our dear main story today is ASEAN and the 9 dash line. But before that, let's look at the current business updates on the topic of Cowboys of ASEAN. Huh. Well, Andrew, what are the Cowboys of ASEAN? Who are these Cowboys? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very interesting topic. <laughs> Maybe, Eric, you let us know what are Cowboys, actually. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, in the olden days, all right, we call oh, Cowboys please. in the movies. Cowboys were most notable in the Wild Wild West, uh -huh. where everyone has a gun and everyone is trigger happy. Both good guys and bad guys. Everybody has guns, ah. Huh? Yeah, and so they which means to say they can shoot each other, they can <laughs> drop people like flies. Uh, those were the days in the Wild Wild West. Uh -huh. And it seems that uh, people quite enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, especially those guys who have guns. Mm. And uh, the stronger guys, they can bully the weak boys. Yes, and uh, we can see that during in the movies that the, those who enjoy good businesses are the morticians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, who is the most famous actor on the cowboy scenes? Clint uh, is Eastwood <laughs> and our uh, Ronald Reagan. <laughs> okay. uh, there are more people famous than that. Uh, I forgot what's the name. All these cowboy movies. <laughs> mm, I think the most most famous one is uh, Clint Eastwood and Ronald Reagan. These, ah, two, yeah. these two are the most notable in the uh, Wild Wild West. These guys, they are usually heroes, right? Rescuing the people who are weaker and shooting mm. their way out of trouble, right? So most of the times, they are the the Westerners who always fight the Red Indians because the Red Indians always... Bad guys. Becomes the bad guy uh -huh. and branded the bad guys. And they have but, long rifles and shotguns. But and as we go along with histories, actually, these are the, the Red Indians are the victims. Ah. Hmm? Victims of conquerors. Yeah, the good guys become the victims. The good guys become the victims. They just want they want to protect the home. So fast forward life. to today, mm -hmm. right? we still have cowboys today all over the world, including advanced countries. Like they say, power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Whenever hum someone holds a pow powerful position, there is a tendency for him to abuse his power, right? Yes. And so we see even in some movies, the high-ranking officers uh, in the police force, they are involved in taking bribes whenever the amount is a big, like those involved in drugs. You know, and and uh, even those are the so-called agencies, politicians, well, in the movies, there are a lot of all these examples. And uh, should all movies go worse, if you don't look at mo don't watch movie as a movie, you watch it deeper into the storyline, you can see Try that... Try to find some relationship with real life. Yeah, right? you can see that most movies actually talks about real life. Mm -hmm. And in actual sense, like... The hidden story. The hidden story behind the it. Movie, yeah. In the movies, whether it's a sci-fi movie, whether it's a... Well, the are two non-fictional movies. And the cowboys in the movies uh, reflect the politicians or the police, mm. the armies of today, right? So in the modern days, like, cowboys, we actually refer to those uh, so-called ruthless politicians or ruthless businessmen. Right. So, mm. Eric, tell us, what are the cowboys today in ASEAN? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Over here in ASEAN, first we have the... I said to say the one MDB saga. Hey Eric, you're talking about my country. Okay, which is world famous by now. Uh, okay. Okay. This Sorry. We, are, we are all reading it through through reports. CNN yeah. news, right? CNN news and all these are the these are the source of our news. We don't make up the stories. We just uh, transmit the story. Yeah, and right. recently there's such thing called a Department of Justice report DOJ. Yes, there were three one MDB officer and one Malaysia official in off. Uh, by now we know all who are all these people. Three officers from one MDB and one, one Malaysian, Malaysian official, official. Okay. involved. Okay. The one MDB, which is Malaysia's sovereign investment fund, was linked, was used like an ATM machine like in the days of Suharto in Indonesia and Marcos in the Philippines. Wow, so now they equate uh, our country to Indonesia those days and Philippines. And uh, that's what the report says, right? And if we put strictly, we can't actually equate Malaysia to Indonesia and Philippines nowadays. These mm. two countries are slightly doing much better and progressing much better than us, mm -hmm. in a sense. Okay? Sadly. Sad to say. The DOJ report, okay, Department of Justice for short, 136 pages, 
show clearly the that funds been fraudulently diverted from the one MDB account to various dubious accounts and eventually ended up in the personal accounts of these officers and official. Uh, okay. Okay. Cowboys today. Cowboys today. How they do that? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> they manage so, to fraud the banks. In a way, this type of cowboys doesn't carry guns. Okay. okay. They are magi. Financial magi cowboys. They are magi carry guns. They don't carry guns. <laughs> right? So... In a way, oh, yeah. they still behave like those in the Wild Wild West. But it's just that now they go stuff much more easier. If they're uh, carrying guns, they carry a lot of money, right? They're carrying a lot of monies and they are more powerful and they're able to maneuver much more things than okay. those in the Wild Wild West. Enough of talking about our country. Let's change the subject. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about Philippines. We also have a cowboy today in Philippines, right? Yes. Yeah. And who is that? Well, it's our dear president, <laughs> Duterte. Duterte. Yeah, okay. He's our modern cowboy. Everybody mm. loves him. Mm. <laughs> who will not? Yeah, he will not hesitate to shoot the bad guys without trial. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's useless to bring the bad guys to court because they are too powerful and they can bribe their way out they can bribe the police, they can bribe the judges. So what Duterte says is, just execute them, don't waste time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that sounds very, very similar to some of the campaign that we, uh, the, when the campaign that we have uh, following lately of the US president elections. Okay. Mm. And right. can you imagine every, everybody in Philippines love him? Of course, except the bad guys. Lah. Yeah, and I understand that the bad guys are actually surrendering themselves both hands up and tell him, mm, please, mm. don't shoot us, put mm. us in jail. <laughs> yeah. And uh, if, in actual fact, when the cowboys or cowboys get them to be more ruthless, the normal people are the ones who get hurt. Right. So it takes somebody at the higher authority to actually execute them, in Sometimes, a sense. Sometimes, uh, like they say, when it goes way beyond too much, mm. somebody will get up and uh, rectify the situation, right? Yes. And, and uh, it happens in a lot of movies where we see uh, vigilantes movies, you know, those are so-called superheroes, mm. heroes in masks. Right? These are the vigilantes that actually goes out to take care of the bad guys mm-hmm. when the law cannot be taken care of. Right. Mm? And uh, I understand that besides the drug lords and these bad guys, uh, Duterte can even negotiate with terrorists to release hostages. He's so powerful. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we have seen recent cases if this happens. Yeah. Right? And uh, in this sense, I mean, the men on the streets actually salute him. Mm, and yeah. actually they respect, really respect him. him. What yeah. a cowboy. <laughs> what a cowboy. <laughs> Similarly to uh, the present presidents of Indonesia. Yeah. yeah. In a sense, he's also a very... Uh, so-called and unlike most other presidents in the world yes. this guy complains he said he say, i don't like to be president mm. the pay is too little yeah <laughs> and we actually for the people this, uh, yeah. this president is for the people so hopefully our the new president of us is truly for the people right uh, that is another super cowboy we'll come to that later right <laughs> uh, the world now so loves it's, cowboys it's whether like nice. cowboys or the angel will sit at the right <laughs> <laughs> or so called angels right great Eric we'll be back shortly with more interesting updates on ASEAN Beast stay tuned guys welcome back folks you're listening to ASEAN Beast before we bring on our main story for this edition, Eric is going to share with us his funny business moment. And the title of his story today is Surprise Party. Why did I get divorced? Well, last week was my birthday. My wife didn't wish me a happy birthday. My parents forgot and so did my kids. I went to work and even my colleagues didn't wish me a happy birthday. As I entered my office, my secretary said, Happy birthday, boss. I felt so special. She asked me out for lunch. After lunch, she invited me to her apartment. Wow. We went there and she says, Do you mind if I go into the bedroom for a minute? Okay, I said. She came out, of, she came out five minutes later with a birthday cake. My wife, my parents, my kids, my friends, and my colleagues all yelling, Surprise! While I was waiting on the sofa, naked. Hey, Eric. <laughs> Enough of dirty jokes. 
You are getting a the yellow the card right, right now. Just like <laughs> when things went soft, you think no. <laughs> Nonsense. Right. Thank you, Eric, for that funny business moment. Guys, you are listening to ASEAN Beast, your only choice for business updates covering ASEAN countries. I'm your host, Andrew Chia. And together with me is Eric Chong, and we bring you business news on everything that involves ASEAN countries. The title of our Durian News story today is ASEAN and the Nine Dash Line. Well, hey. Andrew, what is the Nine Dash Line? Okay, you're giving me a tongue twister here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Why do they have things like that? Nine Dash Line? What in the world is that? Yeah, the Nine Dash Line, or sometimes called Ten or 11 dash line was used by the Chinese government to mark their claims on the South China Sea. It was first published on 1st October 1947 by the People's Republic of China. That was immediately after Second World War, isn't it? Ah, right, yeah, yeah. immediately. So they won so the war and then they said, okay, this all this land belongs to us, plus all these seas also belong to us. So actually the dashes are the line Marking. Which they're marking that they draw the borders which they claim to be a China territory. So this nine dash line exists on the South China Sea. And these are actually small islands that dotted the South China Sea, if I'm not mistaken. And it's actually created the line which formed the. Uh, yeah, border. some of these uh, are marked by islands, but some, the sea is so big, there are not so many islands. Some but what it means is all this nine dash line covers. All the sea and the water which belongs to China. Even the airspace. Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anything above and below belongs to China. So That's why it's called it. 9 dash instead of 10 or 11 dash is because at one time later it was removed by Premier Chao En Lai. Hmm. He removed two of the dashes. And there are some people who say that these two dashes were given to Vietnam as a gesture of their friendship. We are not too sure about this, but yeah. uh, ex- uh, currently there are only nine dashes. Yeah, probably the, the island or so-called rocks are too small to be a significant noticeable thing mm-hmm. for the general people to actually notice this. You know, but then to the to a country, even the small rocks, they need to fight over with it. Yeah, Eric, <laughs> talking about islands and rocks, uh, what are actually the uh, islands or the areas that are contested by other countries like Philippines or even our country Malaysia. Okay, the uh, the so far I mean the most famous one is the one they are fighting for between the Taiwan and the China. Okay, but the contested areas of the South China Seas are Parase Islands, Spatry Islands, Pratas Islands. Wow, all this pronunciation is very Macassfield Bank, Macassfield Bank, Scarborough Shore. Uh, these okay. are the five main islands or places that they're contesting. Right? Okay, why they name the first few islands and they name the others at Bang and Shaw? Uh, English <laughs> is a difficult language, right? <laughs> okay. So this claim was made by China in 1947. However, the international community considered that this claim is rather vague or mm. not strong enough. I think probably during those days, China didn't file in their claims or didn't stick their claims uh, to actually get the title for it. Maybe China thinks that I already draw that line 9 dash, you should know very well what I mean. Hmm. What do you mean by vague? Okay. <laughs> so you should, they should go to the sea and should you draw the line on the sea or on the island? <laughs> so <laughs> or what happened after in? that? <laughs> okay. After that, Philippines brought the case to court and on the 12th July 2016, this year, this year, year, which is this year, the permanent court of arbitrations in Hague. Hague Okay, the court then ruled that China has no legal basis for its claim over the nine dash line. Mm-hmm. Wow! So this after is all the fighting, everybody put their their claims on the reasons on the mm-hmm. table for the judge to uh, make a judgment. And this happens after fifty years. Yeah, mm-hmm. and even Malaysia made some claims, right? Oh, seventy time. years, not fifty years, seventy years. Okay, yeah, seventy rightly, years later, uh, Malaysia says that rightly it should belong to us. This part, mm-hmm. and Philippines also say so. And then China also put... Well, we look at this this way. Philippines already has so many islands. Thousand islands. Thousand <laughs> islands. Uh, look, one less, one more. Doesn't make a difference, isn't it? And why they are fighting away. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm, okay. okay. It's because of power. Mm. Right? The moment they fought it and they won it, which means they, they, they are more
more powerful than the other party. Yeah, they won. But mm. what happened was China immediately rejected the ruling by the court. Okay. <laughs> to them, another cowboy. <laughs> the South China Sea is like their backyard. It's not vague. They don't need to make it clearer. Yes, it's very and clear, guys. When you look it, look back into history. Okay, China have been traveling the South China Sea for hundreds of years. Yeah, in 2021, that book, China traveled tra- throughout tra- the, whole the whole world, world. North and South Pole. And even the maps that John is used by Christopher Columbus. Right, that's beyond a doubt today. That's beyond a doubt. So, in actual fact, that's why they name it South China Sea. Mm-hmm. Huh? So, just by traveling, maybe it's not strong enough to make a claim. La. But uh, uh, they actually defeated the Japanese in the uh, Second World War, and uh, after that, they claimed the seas. And I think why right in this case, where the English common laws applies, when you start to walk that path, then that path belongs to you after a number of years. Right, yeah, seven yes? years common seven law. Seven years common law. So, in this case, the sea probably they have traveled about 700 years right. already. Obviously, the <laughs> law relating to these seas and what is a little bit more complicated <laughs> than what we understand, right? Right, so okay. it's too deep for us to understand. So we so can just uh, able to read out what has been reported mm-hmm. or to summarize it so that our listeners have a better understanding of what happens mm-hmm. instead of reading 236 pages. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we will take a short break and be back with our story shortly. Stay tuned, guys. Welcome back. You are listening to ASEAN Bees and our Duran Lee story today is ASEAN and the Nine Dash Line. But before we continue with the concluding part of our story today, Eric will give us a quick health tip and the story for today is Control Your Weight. Well, we always look at uh, weight control and control your weight, but actually can we control our weight or not? It's true, our lifestyles, you yeah? know? Like, body weight sits like a spider at the center of a web of health and disease. Excess weight predisposes an individual to the development of a host of chronic conditions. The higher the body mass index, we commonly know as BMI, if it's lesser than 25, the greater the prevalence of abnormal blood glucose, lipids and blood pressure, hypertension and cardiovascular disease, diabetes, many cancers, gallstones, sleep apnea, complications of pregnancy, infidelity, and premature mortality. Wow, that's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> if your weight is not controlled and you keep on increasing your weight, and this happens to a lot of obesity. So summarize, you die faster. Yes. <laughs> you are overweight. And under the current national guidelines, a BMI between 10 and 25 is considered optimum, and the best health experience is achieved by avoiding increases in weight during adulthood. And I believe that a lot of adults on nowadays we can see children actually having obesity and their which are actually escalating. It's all down to that square boxes that people invented, the TV, the mm. iPads the and iPads. all these things. No, everything comes in squares. So you sit down and play and play and play to no end. Yeah. And get fatter and fatter, fatter right? and fatter, that's the whole problem. And maintaining a healthy body weight or losing weight is a direct function of calories consumed and expended. Portion control is essential for weight management. The percentage of calories from dietary fats has little relationship with weight management. While low consumption of sugary beverages and trans fats and higher intake of dietary fiber appear to be helpful. Regular exercises and avoidance of extreme inactivities. Okay. Not the word uh, inactivity. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's say. Just mention, right. Uh, such as excessive television wa- <laughs> watching are also integral strategies for weight control. A supportive social and physical environment are also important to help you to control your weight. Because uh, a lot of people actually does not have a very good yeah, self control. I think a good idea would be to unsubscribe Astro, right? Yes, I done that four <laughs> years ago. Yeah, and with good results. <laughs> with good it? results, and uh, sad to say, we still have a very effective uh, internet. <laughs> we should and, replace us. And uh, recently, a lot of uh, so called online TV stations, they make the marketing sc- slogan is how to turn yourself to a couch potato by subscribing <laughs> to this channel. <laughs> <laughs> so, don't listen to any advertisement. Right, just judge for yourself and what is your lifestyle. You know, if your lifestyle is sedentary, 
with the notes and how to get out of it. Just get out of that couch. Yes, that's true. Mm. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Eric. That's a great health tip. Let's continue with our Duran main story today. That is ASEAN and the Nine Dash Line. Okay. And history. Let's go into some history. History. Now we are talking about history already. Ah, uh, yes. I mean, uh, China has been very historical country. <laughs> <laughs> In a sense. Uh, uh, historical or hysterical? <laughs> both. Right? So, historical means that they will keep everything in their mind and record it. <laughs> right? So Old grudges, you mean? Old grudges. And uh, you can see what they will do to the Boxer Rebellion era, <laughs> where all the eight countries attack them. And uh, what about Japan who attack them? Yeah, Red <laughs> of Dunking. Uh, so, he, let's look at history. Following the defeats of Japan at the end of World War II, the Republic of China or Taiwan reclaimed the entirety of the Paracels, Patras, and Spati Island. Okay, I mean the most popular one we heard Spratty of is, Islands, is the Spratly Islands. Yeah. Uh, the other two, nobody heard of it. Yeah. After accepting the Japanese surrender of the island based on the Cairo and Poston Declaration. However, under the 1943 Cairo Declaration and the 1945 Poston Proclamation, sovereignty over the Apalachus and waters of South China Sea was never stated, hence the dispute now. Wow. Mm, so they didn't say clearly uh, what belongs to who. So I think probably they, in those days, they don't have Google Earth. Uh, that's how they, that's Google how they, was not even invented yet. Uh, don't even have the terms Google in the dictionary. Uh, for that matter, they <laughs> have not even invented Hotmail, the first email in the world. <laughs> and <laughs> and they don't even have internet, so the not even satellite. So you can't blame them for the disputes now, is yes, it? Yes, yes. So then, I mean, for the court, like when they're doing the Cairo Declaration, they don't even pay attention to the water. Right, yeah. Hmm? That's why in November 1946, freshly after the Second World War, the Republic of China sent naval ships to take control of these islands after the surrender of Japan. Hmm. When the peace treaty with Japan was being signed at the San Francisco Conference on 7 September 1951, both China and Vietnam asserted their rights to the islands. And later, the Philippine government also laid claim to some islands of the archipelagos. Yeah, you can't blame China, isn't it? <laughs> Since time immemorial, China has been a seafaring nation. Hmm. The travel through the seas, you know, the sea powerful, sea powerful seafaring, nation. seafaring nations, the huge ships in those days mm. during the Emperor Cheng Ho time yeah. and probably before his time they are also they already have a seafaring nations mm. so yeah. uh, right after the world war and at that time uh, it happened that China was Taiwan and Taiwan was China okay that is why today both China and Taiwan claim that the South China Sea belongs to them their claims are exactly the same <laughs> yeah so both of them are also China uh, but today China is the Taiko and uh, Taiwan does not dare to mess with them uh, or make too much noise on this matter. <laughs> <laughs> and they both reject Malaysia and Philippine claims on the island. Yeah. I'm scratching my head. Malaysia is so far away from that side. How can Malaysia make a claim on that one? Uh, it's the nearer part to Malaysia, Eric. Mm. It's not the further part. Okay, okay the nearer part. The South China Sea is rather big. Well, I mean the South China Sea. It's to Taiwan. It still travels all the way by the Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There was one politician in Malaysia who was sympathetic to Chinese claim. Superman. Okay, of course it was considered treason as such. Yeah, how <laughs> can your country is taking a claim on something and then you say uh, it should belong to the other party? Ah. Very unpatriotic, right, Eric? Yes, it's <laughs> the same thing goes with business. You know, when you are selling your products and you say that your competitors' products are better than yours. Yeah, so he got into a lot of hot soup for that. Mm, this is this is a sharp remark through his emotions causing <laughs> a lot of hot soup. Yeah, you know, so, some people uh, say first before they think. And it I reminds me of uh, Donald Trump, right? Sorry. Okay. <laughs> we can tell that. Just give, give, just give it a, a small, short, five minutes discussion after that. Sorry, uh, Trump supporters. <laughs> no offense. Hmm. So, so what happens next? Okay. Well, uh, nothing for the time being. Nobody dares to offend China right now. 
they may not have the most money, but they have the least debt compared to other superpowers like America. Ah, this is like rather ah. sad, isn't it? <laughs> I may not have so much money, but at least I don't owe people that much of money. Yeah, so you see recently there have been uh, international, uh, what do you call, uh, summits and conferences. And this matter, which is supposed to be a very serious matter, was not brought up at all. Nobody dared to, Nobody dared to say anything because... Uh, Nobody as, likes to offend Mr. China, is it? As we know that the world trade is very dependent of China nowadays, and not even in the trades, but in a lot of services. And now China is moving into agriculture, heavy industries, construction. So Eric, can we say China right now is a cowboy? They can behave that way. They have every rights to behave that way. <laughs> okay. Actually, yeah. being a cowboy is not something very uh, uncommon. Mm. Big countries, they are cowboys financially or economically. Yes. Those days, cowboys used to have guns and bombs, right? Uh, those today, days, cowboys are just straightforward cowboys. Yeah, today okay. you have money, you can mm. be a cowboy. And uh, as we men mentioned earlier, today's cowboys can go stealth without you knowing it. Yeah. And they go underground without you knowing it, and they can attack you. Right. So, mm. Eric, finally, what yeah. does this all mean for ASEAN? This yeah. nine dash line or whatever number of lines. Okay, like most people, including Malaysia's former Prime Minister believe that China is benevolent and non-aggressive. Let's hope China continues to help all its ASEAN neighbors. Right, yes. Mr. Mahade used to comment, we don't need to be afraid of China or mm. Japan, even though they are rich and powerful countries. They will never attack us. He's so confident of that. Yeah. As the saying goes, the dog will never bite the hand that feed them. Yeah, and he, <laughs> in the same breath, he mentioned that the Europeans, like the Spanish, the Portuguese, mm. the English people, history has shown that uh, they like to conquer other countries and colonize people, but not China. Not China. And Japan. China have not ever colonized any nations. Yeah, and Japan yeah. after the World War Two doesn't seem uh, to be very aggressive. It does not hold any more uh, so-called properties. Outside of their countries, you know, unless those are commercially bought by their businessmen. Mm, and nowadays, you can see that uh, there are still Commonwealth countries, similarly, like those are under the Great Britain ruling when they conquer other countries. Mm -hmm. you know, we still can see uh, some countries still under the Spanish. Right, and, yeah. uh, Portugal. and I believe, uh, like most people, uh, they believe that there's a lot of uh, fish or petroleum or something found mm. in all, all these islands, right? Yes. And That's why people are fighting about fighting it. Fighting for it. And, uh, well, we are not geologists, we are not politicians, we are just radio hosts. And uh, <laughs> I believe both of us have not been to any of these islands also. <laughs> we don't actually know what is going what, on what there. What really attracts <laughs> other people to go to these islands? Yeah, I believe that most people in the world have not been to these islands. Uh -huh. you know, uh, maybe uh, for interest sake, I will, I will go back and Google Earth and uh -huh. try to look at these islands and see what is there. Or maybe what China's intention is to set up petrol stations around these rocks. Uh, maybe some refueling for the warships or, or yeah, you know, planes or planes, what. Yeah. Don't so, know. so that is a possibility. Same thing like the during Second World War, the Battle of Midway. Mm -hmm. If we just look at history, we look at the geographically. That Midway Island is so small, why they fight away? Strategic, is it? It's a strategic uh, location. For, for putting warships, warships and, uh, and the fuel and, the, and, stuff and like that. supplies, centers, mm -hmm. storing bombs. Yes, <laughs> because the Pacific Ocean is too vast and you can't do it in one trip. So yeah. they have to break down the trips. So we don't know what actually attracts mm. countries to own these islands. So that's why after midway, the Japanese go and right Hawaii. Huh. Uh, so that's the thing. Yeah. So it's all about strategically located during wartime. Right. So Eric, shall we say right now for the time being, we shall just let the issue rest for a while. Mm. And, and maybe we <laughs> talk about a bit of interest at this moment about our Hillary Clinton and <laughs> Donald Trump. Ah, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. the movie on the other side. Movies on the Last other side. the popcorn, they say. Yes, one is a very so-called cowboy, wow, wow, west. Yeah, with a powerful uh, hairstyle. With a powerful hairstyle, uh, so-called uh, presidential candidates. Yeah, and the other is the most charming lady. Charming on lady Earth. and uh, most humane, as they put it. Um, yeah, it depends uh, on depends, who looks at it. Uh, and uh, she always prophesies uh, humanity, mm. peace, and cultured nations. 
But in today's world, do we see any cultured nations? Do we see humanity or not? Mm, depends on who you ask. Right. Uh, so, uh, so much Facebook uh, showing that animals are more humane than human beings. <laughs> yes. right now, yeah, sad, right? It's sad, and uh, as I said earlier, a dog will never bite the hands that feed him. Uh-huh. But in today's world, we can see that human beings are actually killing off the hands that feed them. <laughs> <laughs> so, these are the situations where the, the two campaigns, uh, two candidates have different campaign or two extreme campaigns like Donald Trump's. Yeah, his campaign is to whack everybody. <laughs> yeah, and Obama just announced that Hillary Clinton will be the best president for America uh, ever. Mm. She is better than uh, Obama himself and she's even better than Bill Clinton, his mm. predecessor. Okay. <laughs> right. But then uh, you look at, on the other hand, the whole world has been practicing humanity for the past what, 100 over years or 60, 70 years since Second World War. Right? And uh, where does the world is to? We see more killings, we see more terrorist attacks and we see more bombings. Is that humanity cost? Is that caused by humanity or too much of leniency against humanity? So, uh, what do you <laughs> recommend? Kill everybody on the planet? Well, I mean, uh, Donald Trump has his own campaign. Yeah. Probably these are the voices that the uh, small people would like to listen. But they might be bullied. Right? Okay. And uh, if you look at it, if you look back in the history, like Bao Zedong, during those days, he actually campaigned at the villages. Yeah, and he killed millions of people. He killed millions also. of people. He kills millions of people also. And uh, Cambodia also, they kills millions of people. So these are the things. We, we don't know what happened. And I guess probably Donald Trump won't kill millions of people. Yeah, just, <laughs> uh, we just hope that he keeps his fingers away from that button. From the button. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, you don't, yeah. you don't uh, die to me, I press this button. <laughs> I think we will have more interesting news on that in our coming editions, right? Yes. Uh, the elections is about 100 days away. Yeah, it's, it's the first Tuesdays of November. Uh-huh. Right. So, it's now September and then, the first we do Tuesdays of November. The so, world. the Tuesday of November is what? Is it on the... First week. <coughs> first week. Right? It's not exactly on the first week, so it's actually on the second week, if you talk mm-hmm. about the first Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Right. It's the first November, if I'm not mistaken. Right. So we keep our eyes open, keep our ears open, and a more interesting campaign will be coming our way. Mm. Yeah. Right, guys. We have come to the end of our show today. We hope you have enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed making it. We will be back with a brand new Durian main story for our next edition on ASEAN Beast soon. Yeah. Thank and you. And we'll before we end it, probably the next editions. I will bring along a guest. Okay, he is a young boy, represented Malaysia. Right. For the recent ASEAN University game in Singapore. Uh-huh. So we will get him on the line or in our studio to share about his experiences involved in ASEAN as a sports athlete. Uh, Great. Okay, so stay tuned, guys, and don't miss our exciting episode next week. Thank you. Bye.